The southern Midwest and Northeast could be in for a significant winter storm by next week where we could also see a significant ice storm develop in the southern portion of the United States and we of course also have this low pressure system that's located right now towards the Pacific Northwest that's expected to move further eastward and bring over six inches of snow to many areas of the northern Midwest. If I were to continue to move forward with what the latest depiction of the European model is stating by tomorrow morning you should begin to see the snowfall in southern south dakota as well as northern nebraska where we do see the snowfall is around moderate to heavy at times associated with this snow band that's expected to develop and the certainty is very high with this it seems like it's going to move in this in this general direction towards the east the heaviest snowfall should be right up along the um, south dakota and nebraska border and then this should eventually move into des moines by the midday on saturday before moving into chicago um later on um during saturday afternoon into saturday night and then we do see this will strengthen a little bit as it continues continues to head further eastward and encounters this very warm air mass that's just to the east of it that's going to create an unstable environment for the convection to enhance as this storm continues to head further eastward and we see some snow in the interior northeast as well where you could experience up to three six inches associated with the storm system now next storm system we're taking a look at could develop by next week where well it is likely to develop by next week um, based on the latest depiction of the European model we do see that there's going to be a low pressure system that's going to move down the California coast and behind it there's going to be plenty of cold air so we should see snowfall as well in the higher elevations of Nevada California Utah and even portions of Colorado associated with this low pressure system as it continues to move further south eastward and then moving forward with the forecast we do see that another ridge is expected to build um, just behind this low pressure system which has been a common trend this winter we've been seeing very strong ridging throughout the eastern half of the United states and with this old pressure system now moving towards the east encountering a strong southerly flow that's being induced by this strong um ridge it's gonna it's gonna encounter again a very unstable environment along with the uh, plenty of cold air that's behind it so we're gonna see a lot of convection throughout texas and we have the possibility of ice because a warm front is expected to develop as a result of this old pressure system moving eastward it's gonna create just enough convection it's gonna create a warm front and typically when we see a warm front move into an area where the, the air mass is of course below um very cold and brings below freezing temperatures along the surface that's what creates the possibility of an ice threat because as a warm front enters a very cool air mass that creates a, a warm air inversion in the mid levels of the atmosphere and on the surface the temperature is still hovering around freezing so that that so when we see a, a scenario like that we see a high possibility of a freezing rain threat and that's what's expected for northern texas and oklahoma so definitely around the dallas area you need to pay very close attention to the possibility of an ice storm forming out of this old press system because because it seems like there's going to be just enough of a warm air um, inversion in the mid-levels of the atmosphere for an ice threat to develop. And we could see maybe around 1 to 3 inches of snow associated with this old pressure system if the convection um, becomes strong enough. We do see that the ice continues over a prolonged period as the this old pressure system is going to move very slowly. There's very weak steering currents over this old pressure system. So we're going to continuously see an enhanced amount of convection throughout Texas. And eventually, the rain showers should move into the northeast where we do see some of the ice also move into the northeast but as well as snowfall and what's interesting is that this does impact areas close to the interstate 95 corridor where boston new york city and even philadelphia gets involved with snowfall in the latest depiction of the european model now this is still five days out and since the gfs model is still showing disagreements with what the european model is stating there's still um there's still a decent amount of uncertainty with the exact trajectory of this storm system and where exactly the heaviest snowfall will occur but what i could assure is that the, somewhere along the east coast you will experience at least some sort of winter storm or ice threat as we move into the midweek of next week as we approach february so for many areas along the east coast this could be your first snowfall accumulation you experience for the year which is just insane to think about in fact in many areas up along the east coast this is on pace to be the quietest winter on record when it comes to snowfall new york city for example will likely break the record of not receiving any accumulating snowfall till february that hasn't happened before so very quiet winter for the east coast so that could change 
with this winter storm. Now, there's still um, things we're going to need to pay close attention to. We're going to need to pay close attention to how this ridge builds just to the east of it because while the, G the European model is expecting a little bit of a stronger ridge, which wants to bring the snowfall and the ice a little bit further northward into the northeast, the GFS model is disagreeing with that scenario where it wants to bring the snow showers further southward to where the Carolinas get involved as well as Virginia. Um, so we're going to need to pay close attention to how strong this ridge is. And also, another thing too is that the GFS, you, um, if I were to show you guys what's how it look, it's looking like in the northern Midwest, we do see a small snow band. And while you might not think much of it, the GFS model wants to bring a much stronger clipper system southward. At the same time, this storm system develops in the southeast. So um, that will be very interesting because if this clipper system ends up being as strong as GFS model expects, then we could see the snowfall even impact New England despite the fact that neither of the two computer models want to bring this initial low pressure system that far up north but this clipper system could bring that possibility of snowfall to areas uh, much further northward than where this first low pressure system wants to move so we're going to need to pay close attention if this um, low pressure system is strong enough let me show you guys the gfs model right now so the GFS model is pretty much taking a very identical forecast to what the European model is stating. Heavy snow showers throughout Nebraska, South Dakota, as well as Chicago, Milwaukee, Detroit. Make sure to pay close attention to that, where you could expect anywhere from 3 to 6 to 6 to 12 inches, especially if you're further westward, where the storm will be a little bit stronger uh, um, right around the northern Midwest. So you want to pay very close attention to that. But moving forward into this next storm system, the GFS model expects a little pressure them to move down the California coast at a very similar trajectory. It expects a, a, around an identical amount of cold air behind the solar pressure system. However, the big difference, like I said, is that this ridge is definitely a lot weaker. Let me show you guys that real quick in the 500 millibar height anomaly. So this is what the European model expects when it comes to the 500 millibar height anomaly. Once this low pressure system approaches Southern California, we see a very strong ridge, which is the reason why the, uh, the European model wants to bring the storm a little bit further northward and brings more of that snow into New York City, Philadelphia, and even up towards the southern portions of New England. But it's a very different story when we take a look at the GFS model. The GFS model you see is taking a ridge that's a lot weaker than what the European model is stating, which is the reason why the GFS model wants to bring this storm a lot further southward to where North Carolina and Virginia get a little bit more involved in that scenario. And also, it doesn't bring as significant of an ice threat. And the reason being is that the low pressure system moves a little bit too far south to encounter the cooler air that's further northward. So we aren't seeing enough freezing temperatures right up along the surface of further southward this old pressure system moves so in the gfs's model scenario the ice threat would be limited compared to what the european model is stating Going back to the GFS forecast model, when it comes to precipitation, we do see that some rain showers develop right around the Texas, Oklahoma area, but we do see it's the rain showers are a lot less frequent than what the European model is currently expecting. We do see that eventually this storm, but however, a key thing is that this so precious system that I was talking to you guys about with the European model that's very weak is a lot stronger in the GFS model scenario, and we do see the so precious system moves further southward. So as well, we see a much more significant storm for much of the northeast. But we also see that some of the snow showers move into Virginia and the extreme northern portions of the Carolinas as well, which is very interesting. And um, so we're going to need to pay close attention to, it to see if this ridge will end up being strong enough as it approaches the United States Canadian border. As um, So far this winter, like I've been saying, the European model has been the more reliable model. So I'm leaning towards the European model's forecast a little bit more than GFS model, but we can't rule out the GFS model either. But for the most part, it seems like we will at least see some ice storm threat right around Oklahoma and Texas. We're going to need to see how significant it'll actually be. The European model is forecasting the ice threat to be a little bit more significant. And the GFS model, however, is is expecting a snowstorm that's a little bit more significant for the northeast than the european model is expecting and we do see some ice move into virginia as well now let's take a look at the snow totals from both of the computer models 
This is what the European model is forecasting when it comes to snowfall over the next few days. We do see that much of northern uh, Midwest experiences three to six, uh, some areas over six inches of snow associated with this next snowstorm moving through. So in Chicago, Milwaukee, for your Saturday commute, need, you need to uh, take precaution as you drive on the roads. And in, in some areas, it might be best not to drive at all because that snow could fall at a very fast clip in some areas, especially further westward you go. And then Des Moines will get involved as well and potentially the metropolitan areas of Detroit could get involved with anywhere up from three six inches of snow but with this second snow so we do see that we mainly see an, around an inch of snow um, throughout our, um, northern Arkansas, Oklahoma, and portions of Texas before the snow becomes a little bit more significant as low pressure some moves northeastward, where we do see a pretty large area of three to six inches of snow for much of the northeast. And New York City and Boston get involved with some snowfall accumulation in the GFS's model scenario. So there's definitely something to keep in mind around northeast and much of the east coast in general because we could be in for a significant snowstorm by next week week. The GFS model is forecasting the snow to be a little bit um, more stronger for the northeast as well as portions of the southeast where we do see Tennessee and northern Arkansas get involved with a little bit more than an inch of snow. And then we do see the um, New York City gets involved with around three six inches. So does the Boston area. And then the interior northeast as well gets involved with heavier snowfall. So this is mean, something to keep in mind over the next several days. We could potentially see this soul pressure become stronger um, depending on how much instability there will be and we're going to need to pay close attention to how this ridge builds because there's still that possibility that snow could move further southward into the Carolinas. so i wouldn't let your guard down just yet if you're further southward into the carolinas hoping for snowfall um so you, um make sure to pay attention to that over the next several days as well as oklahoma and texas where you could be in for a significant ice storm threat so here's my forecast when it comes to snowfall over the next several days for much of the United States. We do see that with this first snowstorm, expect anywhere from 6 to 12 inches of snow right along the border of South Dakota and Nebraska. 3 to 6 in Chicago, Milwaukee, and Detroit. The certainty is high with this first snowstorm, so you want to make sure you take the right precautions. And then moving southward into the second snowstorm that's starting to build next week. Keep in mind, this forecast is subject to change. For the second snowstorm, The it's still far from certain at this point. I need to point that out. Um, so for the major, so there could be that possibility of a major ice threat um, for Oklahoma, Arkansas, and even as far east as Tennessee. And I wouldn't be surprised if that moves into Virginia as well or portions of the mid-Atlantic. So you want to pay close attention to that. And then three to six inches of snow is possible for much of northeast including some of the bigger cities like new york city and boston so there's still a high amount of uncertainty with the second snowstorm but it is likely at this point that the that oklahoma and texas will at least experience some sort of ice or snowstorm from this old pressure system and it's becoming increasingly likely at least somewhere in the northeast you will experience a snowstorm out of this old pressure system so i'll keep guys update over the next several days but i thank you guys for watching